Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at OptionAlpha.com and in this video we're going to talk about knowing when to adjust an option trade or not. So adjustment timing is actually a very popular question we get from our members. In fact, if I could guess, we would probably get around two to five different questions or support tickets or forum threads around this concept of making adjustments and timing almost every single day. So it is an extremely popular concept, hopefully something we can help address with a little more clarity here in this video. Now first, it's important to understand that there are definitely two extremes to, a, to adjusting a trade. And I think the first extreme that I'll go through is using an example of medicine, because medicine is a great analogy for how you should be managing your portfolio and adjusting. And I love to use analogies as you probably have already, already are aware. So my father's diabetic, actually most of the men on my side of the family are diabetic. And he had been, you know, through a bunch of medicine with his doctor and got to the point where he was taking so much medicine that they were actually conflicting with one another. So he was taking, you know, five things in the morning and two things in the afternoon and whatever the case is. And they all individually were trying to accomplish their own little mission, but then collectively they ended up becoming a big mess and ended up, you know, kind of, you know, sending him into a bad, you know, uh, physical state and a bad health state. So the analogy here is that if you're trading, there is an extreme where too much trading, so too much adjusting can be detrimental. And yes, you could be trying to do individually good things to each position. So you're adjusting this position and it makes sense and this one and it makes sense. But collectively, all of the adjustments end up being this overdose or this overload of adjustments. So you have to realize there is a point at which you can over adjust some things or over trade them. Now, on the other hand, you could also run into the other side of it, which is analysis paralysis or overthinking. I love this image and this quote from Higher Perspective that says, overthinking, the art of creating problems that weren't even there. And this is really a lot of traders I see, actually most traders I see really kind of overanalyze every possible scenario and situation for making an adjustment. And they basically get into this analysis paralysis where they end up not doing anything at all, which could be detrimental to maybe doing something and maybe it didn't work out exactly like you thought or planned or you know kind of strategized but at least it was doing something better than nothing so again there's these two concepts and obviously you know you really have to find a balance between too much and not enough adjusting that's right for you and your risk tolerance i can't tell you what that ends up being it, it's so many different factors that go into it as far as the trades that you're making, your position size, et cetera, et cetera. I can tell you, in my opinion, I'm always slower to adjust. So I always err on the side of maybe adjusting a trade, but not over adjusting the trade, making small adjustments at small increments along the way, and always try to make adjustments on a slower basis because I know that long term, the edge in option selling is still in my favor. So even if I didn't make any adjustments, I'd still win a certain amount of time. I'd still hit my you know targeted portfolio probability of success and return. I can still hit all of that long term. So that's why I'm just a little bit more slower in pace in how I adjust trades. Again, that's just my own uh, personal preference. So again, the question is, when do you adjust or hedge a trade and how can we make it as systematic as possible to remove our emotions? Well, the answer is you have to use trigger points and alerts. And I think you really have to use both of these in conjunction with one another to really make this effective for your trading. So trigger points for me have been incredibly helpful because it's a set of road markers or guideposts, whatever you want to call them, that basically tell me when it's time to make an adjustment or hedge a trade. And basically what I do is I set up these automated alerts in advance that help take my emotions out of the game. And now it becomes get an alert, make an adjustment. So the if then statement, if I get an alert, meaning I'm not going to watch and monitor it and babysit the trade the entire time. If I get an alert, or I get a notification that something's happened that triggers me then to make an adjustment, I'll make that adjustment immediately. And so that's the way that I've set it up with my portfolio. And again, I'll go through some examples here in detail as we work through this video. So there are some popular trigger points and I wanna first talk about them and then we'll go through them here with an example from a live trade that we currently have going on right now. So the first trigger point that you can set up is your short strike reaches a 30 delta. 
Now I have to tell you that the initial assumption here is that you're entering all of your trades at about a 70% chance of success. Okay, so we'll go through a couple examples here, but we're assuming that all of your trades are entered at about a 70% chance of success. And in this case, if you did a strangle, each side of your trade has about a 15% chance of being in the money. So if you sold a call option, and you sold a put option, they each individually have about a 15% chance of being in the money, or they're at about a 15 delta when you initially enter the position, okay? So the first trigger point then is if your short strike on one side or another reaches a 30 delta. And what that basically means is that on one side of your trade, the probability of losing went from 15% up to 30%. So basically a doubling in your probability of losing on that side of the trade. You could also use a short strike going to 40. So if you're maybe a little bit more or you want the trade to work a little bit more, you can withstand a little bit more pressure, meaning that you can withstand the trade going against you a little bit sooner and maybe for a little bit longer, you can enter a trigger at a 40 delta short strike. So instead of the delta of going from 15 to 30, you're gonna let it go even more all the way up to 40. So the stock really has to move against you in a bigger way for you to actually be triggered to make an adjustment. The third way that you can do it is you can do a 2x of your initial credit, or really, I mean, you can put anything x here. You can do a 3x of your initial credit, 4x, whatever the case is. But let's say that you entered a strangle and you took in, you know, let's say $100. So if the value of that strangle goes up 2x to $300, and now you're looking at a $200 loser, that might then trigger you to make an adjustment. So now you're the trigger is now based on the value of the contract that you traded or the strategy that you traded versus the short strike probabilities and deltas. Not something we typically do here as far as adjustment techniques. So we don't typically use this uh, value 2x credit, but I know it's very popular out there and obviously I wanted to cover it. So the last one that you can try to use is when the long or when the stock breaches your long strike. So this would be an adjustment technique where you're really gonna wait for the stock to go completely against you. Maybe you sold a call spread or sold a put spread down below the market and you're gonna wait for the stock to breach the long strike of that strategy, not the short strike that we can maybe look at in uh, trigger number one or trigger number two, but you're gonna actually wait for the stock to go completely in the money on either end beyond your long strike before you make an adjustment. Again, it's not to say that any of these are necessarily better than you know one or the other. It's just you have to understand how long you're waiting maybe how much risk you're willing to take or not or whatever the case is, okay? So let's go through number one here and talk about what a short strike 30 delta might look like. And again, we're gonna use a really good example by building out a new trade here in LinkedIn. And again, we're on our broker platform at Thinkorswim. This is all live real-time market data at the time that we're doing this video, but we're gonna build out a trade here in LinkedIn assuming that you entered a neutral iron condor or you could do it as a straddle, whatever you wanna do. And we're gonna use these adjustment trigger points and kind of set them up one by one so you can see how each of these might work. So if we're looking at the May contracts for LinkedIn, you can see that to initially set up this iron condor and again be at about a 70% chance of success, we're gonna target each side of the trade or our anchor strike price to be around a 15% probability of being in the money. Now, the 85s in this case for LinkedIn, about 12.5%. So we're gonna go up to the 90s. There's no 15% probability uh, on either side, but the, the 90s are around a 12 delta, about 17% chance of being in the money. So we're gonna use those on the bottom side. And then on the top side, we're gonna use the 140 strikes because those are almost right at a 15% chance of being in the money. So we're gonna basically set our anchor strikes or our short strikes for this strategy at the 90 puts and then the 40 calls above the market. In this case, we're gonna build out an iron condor in LinkedIn and we're just gonna add each of these sides here real quick so we can build out this strategy and kind of talk about it a little bit more. And then we're gonna sell the put spread down below the market Great, so that can get us our advanced order here, uh, which is our iron condor. So now you can see we take in a credit of about 125, and I'm just rounding up here, 
roughly a 70% chance of success. Okay, so this might be a trade that you look at, but we're just going to use it as an example here for the purposes of adjusting. Now, if we enter this trade, let's assume we had confirmed and said enter this trade and it's now working in the market. So we'll throw it over on the analyze tab and take a look at what the risk profile looks like. And you can see it's a very neutral, even iron condor. Again, a very simple trade that most people would make with the stock trading right in the middle of our range, basically as neutral as possible. Now the question becomes, how do we set up these initial trigger points to let us know when we need to make an adjustment to this trade? Because we don't want to babysit this trade. Meaning I don't want to come in here every single day and have to check LinkedIn or any of my other trades and say, okay, do I have to make an adjustment? When do I have to make an adjustment? Then I get emotional. What's the market like? Am I winning on the position? Am I not? Whatever the case is. So setting up these trigger points is going to be really, really helpful in streamlining your trading process and removing your emotions. So how do we do it? Well, the first one that we looked at was a 30 delta trigger point. So what a 30 delta trigger point basically means is that if either side increases the short strike, which is the 140 on the call side or the 90 on the bottom side on the put side, if either side increases its delta from basically wherever it is to a 30 delta, then we would make an adjustment. In this case, we think about it logically as a doubling of risk on one side. Because if the initial probability of losing on, let's say, the call side or the stock going up to 140 is only about 15%, if the delta or the probability doubles on that side to basically 30%, then we have a doubling of risk. We have a two times higher likelihood of losing on the call side, meaning that the stock has moved against us. Remember, the only way that the delta increases is if this strike price becomes a lot closer to where the stock is trading. Notice that if the stock is right now at about 115, the delta or a strike price with about a 30 delta right now is about a 130 strike. So basically what we're looking at is if the stock moves up about $10, we should see this delta move up to about a 30 delta, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click here and look at this delta, it's currently 19, so it may be a little bit different. Again, deltas are just a, a very rough approximate, but you're gonna use that probability that you still use to enter your initial trade. We're gonna right click here and we're going to create an alert. So once you create an alert, this new alert dialog box is gonna come up. And basically what it's gonna say is it's gonna say, okay, we're gonna look at the stock or the spread and it's gonna notify us whenever the delta crosses at or above whatever it's at. Now, initially, it's gonna give us a uh, price of where the delta is right now. And in this case, what we wanna do is we wanna change this to 30. So once we change this to 30, then we're gonna say, okay, this new alert will only activate if this delta on this option goes up to 30. That's the only time that it'll actually trigger us and we can get notified via email or we can get notified via text message or whatever the case is, you can get notified a bunch of different ways. I like to do email because I just want to be notified via email. I'll get a nice little email that says, hey, the delta for LinkedIn is now above 30. That is my trigger point to come in here and make the adjustment technique, some of the stuff that we're going to talk about uh, further along in track number three here. But that's how you set up this adjustment or this alert on the top side. Now again, you could set up this delta to be at a 40 delta. So if you wanna say, okay, I'll only adjust this trade if the delta goes up to 40. Okay, great. Set up the trade to adjust only at 40. But remember what you're doing here. A 40 delta is basically letting the stock move about $15 against your position before you make an adjustment. Remember, the option with about a 40 delta right now or something close to it is the 125 strike. So if the stock were to move up about $15, that would create a basically uh, a 40 delta for your short strike. So you just have to understand that you might be, you have to be willing to accept maybe a little bit more risk on that trade initially and maybe adjust it a little bit slower later on in the process, okay? So on the put side, we can do the same technique for adjusting our short strike on the put side. So the short strike on the put side is a negative 12 delta right now because we sold the 90s. Again, we can just right click on this, say create an alert. And now what we wanna do is we wanna say delta at or below. Now this is the key point here because you wanna make sure that with your negative put deltas that you put it at at or below negative 30 or negative 40 or whatever you wanna be. 
If it says at or above, when you create this alert, you'll automatically get an email because it's basically gonna be above whatever price that you entered in there. So just make sure that you double check and you say, okay, on the put side, I want the delta at or below negative 30. And again, when the risk in this trade goes up from a 17.73% probability to somewhere around a 30, 32% probability of losing on that one side, then you'll get an email alert that says, hey, look, LinkedIn has moved down far enough that this trade is now at risk on one side of the of the uh, spread or one side of the iron condor. And again, with these uh, anchor points and these trigger points, you're basically doing everything off of the short strikes. So the 140 calls, the 70 puts, or the 90 puts, you're doing everything off of these anchor strikes. So if you're doing an iron condor, this works the same as if you're doing a strangle. It doesn't matter. As long as you're doing a short premium strategy, this is the best way to do it. If you're doing a credit spread, you can do it the same way. You just have to set it up on one side versus with an iron condor, you might have to set up two of these alerts on either side of the trade. So if we go back to our popular triggers here, we've basically really covered the short strike at a 30 delta, how to set that up, how to set up those triggers. Same thing with a 40 delta. Again, you can use any combination in here. We just, you know, arbitrarily said, look, you know, you can look at 30, you can look at 40, whatever the case is, you know, use something around these numbers, 35, 40, 45, whatever works out best for you. And set up those triggers to let you know that the value of the options or that the probability of the options going in the money has now increased and now you might need to make an adjustment to this trade. Number three is the value of the contract has now gone up 2x from the initial credit. Now this one's gonna be a little bit different and harder to set up triggers. In fact, most of the ways that you can set up trigger for, triggers for number three here are the value going up by some x percent is very antiquated and takes a lot of steps. So we're not gonna go through in this video. I don't think you need to do it. I think number three is one of those ones where if you're gonna use that as your basis for making an adjustment, you just have to watch the value of the contract uh, go up. So in this case, if the contract that you sold in LinkedIn was valued at $125, a 2X of that would basically be about $375. So again, if the value of the contract goes up from 125 all the way to 375, again, two times higher than it is right now or 2x higher than it is right now, then you would consider making an adjustment. Now, the reason I don't use this technique, just to be completely open and clear, the reason I don't use this technique is because the value of these options can actually go up if implied volatility goes higher, meaning if we didn't properly enter the trade with really high implied volatility or fairly high implied volatility and volatility rose in LinkedIn, the stock doesn't have to move anywhere, meaning the stock price can stay exactly the same. Volatility going up then creates the value of this option to go up as well. So the reason I don't use this is one, you can't really automate the value of these options and checking these for alerts. It's very hard and antiquated to do. It would create a lot of work to do that. And number two is that it's not really directional based based on the value of the underlying stock. What I like to look at more so is the directional basis of the underlying stock. Is the stock really moving against me or is it not? And in this case, you could have an a situation where the stock doesn't even move against you at all and the value of the options go up, you get triggered to make an adjustment, but there's no adjustment really to be made. There's nothing you can really uh, want to do or would need to do in that situation. Now, number four is a very popular one. This is, again, one that you would want to use if and only if the stock really made a large move against your position, you're willing to hold it, and that's if the stock breaches your long strikes. So again, going back here to our platform, if we were looking at our LinkedIn trade, our long strikes in this case are 45 calls and our 85 puts. Now, if you're gonna do this with a straddle or a strangle, you'd be looking at the stock breaching the short strikes because you wouldn't have any long strikes. So that's obviously uh, what you'd be focusing on. But if you're gonna do an iron condor or a credit spread or something along those lines, you'd be looking at the stock breaching these long strikes, which again, the 145 <clears throat> call and the 85 put down below the market. Now you'd set up these alerts very similar to what you did before. And we basically just click on the 85 strikes here We'd right click on it and say create an alert. And then now what we wanna say is we wanna say that the actual 
stock itself, so instead of the spread, but the actual stock itself is now at or below our 85 strike price, okay? So that's how you'd set it up for the actual strike price or, or the stock breaching that long strike price. And again, this is setting it up on the bottom side with our put strike. So we basically set up this alert all the way down below the market. You can see LinkedIn's trading all the way above the market at 114 right now. So it's only gonna trigger and notify us via email if the stock price is at or below $85. And again, that would then trigger us to come in and make some sort of adjustment. If we wanna do it on the top side, we could just say, okay, at or above our call strike on the long side, which is the 145 calls above the market. So now you can see your trigger is now set up all the way at the 145 strike above the market, and the stock still is about 114, uh, 115 or so uh, trading right now. So very, very easy to do that. But remember, that's gonna basically push you to the limit and basically not give you a lot of time to make an adjustment. It is gonna give the stock more room to move, obviously a lot more of a fluctuation in price as it gets closer to expiration. There's no right or wrong way to do it here. I'm just trying to help you understand these different ways that you can set up triggers for how you adjust a trade going forward. Okay, so some common sense comments that I wanna add. Generally, if there's a lot of time left until expiration in the contracts, I'll let the trade run against me a little more. Again, this is not to say that every time that we get an alert, we have to make an adjustment because as we talked about previously, making an adjustment has to make sense for the trade and for the portfolio. So if there's a lot of time left until expiration, maybe the stock made a quick one day move against me and now my you know, delta went from 15 to you know, 30 in the first day. Okay, maybe I'll let it run another couple days to see, hey, is this trend really gonna continue or was just this just a one day pop against me? If I've got a lot of time, I'll generally let the contracts work a little bit more and kind of be a little bit more flexible in when I adjust it because I want the probabilities to have uh, a lot of opportunity to work themselves out. This also means obviously that if we are limited in time, meaning it's nearing expiration, 15 days or sooner, then we wanna be a little bit more proactive in some of our adjustments. We don't necessarily want the stock to run against us a little bit more. We want to be a little bit more proactive in how we trade. Always try to avoid adjusting too close or too fast. This kind of goes on uh, on the same lines of, of the other one. You can always make more adjustments if needed later on. So I'm a big fan of making small incremental adjustments along the way, meaning I will roll contracts closer by a small amount because I know I can keep rolling them closer and closer and closer all the way to expiration. What you don't want to do is you don't want to be triggered to make an adjustment and then make the most aggressive adjustment possible, take in as much credit as possible and you know try to reduce as, ri as much risk as possible so early in the expiration cycle that you basically kind of price yourselves out of the market. You basically create a strategy that has no potential for really winning. So for example, if we go back to our LinkedIn trade, a common adjustment for a uh, iron condor is to roll one credit spread closer to where the stock is trading. So let's say that LinkedIn, you know, all of a sudden, you know, starts moving up to let's say 120, which is a five dollar move, but for a hundred dollar stock, not a huge, huge move that would necessarily, you know, trigger us to make a massive adjustment. But if you then rolled up your put spread side all the way to 120, and now your new resulting position in LinkedIn looked like this, a really tall, thin iron condor, you've pretty much you know, given yourselves a very small window of opportunity to make money. So you, yes, you made an adjustment. Yes, it probably reduced risk, but you've also dramatically limited your ability to make an adjustment. And again, these contracts are 40 or 50 plus days away. So there's a lot of time for LinkedIn to move. It's gonna be hard pressed to really pin a stock in a $20 range like LinkedIn, that might be a big mover. So what I favor is just making small adjustments. Roll up that put spread side a little closer. Then you can roll it up closer if the stock continues to move against you. And if it continues to move against you, you keep rolling up that put spread side closer and closer and closer. You just make these small incremental adjustments along the way so that you don't over adjust the position uh, too much and kind of be too aggressive in how you do it. 
The last thing is there is no perfect adjustment timing sequence and it always and you always have to consider the impact on your overall portfolio before adjusting. As we talked about in uh, numerous videos before, it is more important to consider the impact of an adjustment on your portfolio than the individual position. If your individual adjustment to let's say LinkedIn that we're looking at right now and that was our case study, if this adjustment in LinkedIn turns LinkedIn from a loser to a winner, great. But if that same adjustment that turns LinkedIn in from a loser to a winner also turns the entire portfolio from being winning right now, even without adjusting LinkedIn, to a losing situation and kind of unbalances you, uh, then it's not really a good adjustment for your overall portfolio. So just consider that. Analyze the trade. Take a look at it. You know, see what really you know can kind of work for your portfolio. Again, the key here is to have something in place and stick with it for a while. So my suggestion, pick from one of the four popular trigger points, work with it for a couple months, then switch if needed. To give you guys an idea of where I kind of stand on trigger points before we kind of end this video, where I kind of focus a lot of my adjustment timing and techniques is around the 40, uh, 30 to 40 delta, okay? So there's no right or wrong answer in here. And again, I'm a little bit fluid in which one I might pick based on timing. So. If a, if a stock moves against me you know, really quick initially and it's the first day that I have the trade on, I might be a little hesitant to you know, adjust it so quickly in the cycle. I might give the stock you know, another couple days to move against me if it does before I make an adjustment. So I'm always slower to make adjustments than possibly necessary. Uh, so I do focus on the short strike deltas. I think that's the better way to go. I think when you actually you know, look at a trade and kind of, you know, think about the logic behind why I focus on those short strikes is because I want to know more so than the value of the option, because the value of the option can go up or down, you know, any given day based on implied volatility, et cetera. But I really want to know, you know, is the stock really moving against me or is it really not? You know, is my position really you know, becoming less and less likely to profit or is it not? And so for me, I base a lot of that decision on delta and probability of being in the money for the short strikes. I want to know, look, if the stock's really moving against me to the downside, these deltas and this probability is going to go up. They're going to, you know, alert me to the fact that I might need to make an adjustment. Same thing on the top side. If the stock moves against me to the top side and starts moving higher, these deltas and this probability of losing is going to go up. That's going to alert me to, um, you know, how long or how short I should, you know, get in the stock or make an adjustment, whatever the case is. The other thing that I like about using deltas and probabilities is that it's time dependent. So remember, these probabilities and deltas will adjust as you get closer to expiration. So we're about 50 days out from May expiration right now. If we looked at this exact setup and if LinkedIn didn't move, between now and let's say the next 10 days, these deltas and these probabilities would adjust to reflect the, t the fact that there's 10 days less to go in the expiration cycle. So by using delta, you naturally have this hedge or this um, kind of time factor that's built in. So it can help you know when to make an adjustment based on how much time is left. Um, so again, that's another reason why I like to use the delta of each individual short strike as kind of my trigger point for making adjustments versus the long strike of a particular um, strategy or the overall credit received. That's just how I kind of focus and that's how I've been taught and, and find uh, you know to be very successful in how we make adjustments here at Option Alpha. So hopefully that helps out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it brings a lot of clarity to adjustment timing. If you have any comments or questions, feedback. I'd love to hear them in the comment section below. If you thought this video was very helpful, if you loved it, please consider sharing it online. Send it to a friend, a family member, a coworker, somebody who might need some help with trading. We'd love to uh, obviously spread the word about what we're trying to do here at Option Alpha.